Hello there everybody, my name is Coach Chad Longstabon, but built, built for Theme Park News and welcome to a Theme Park News update. This is a big one, this is a big one from Fujiku Highland in Japan. This is on a brand new roller coaster set to open in 2022 according to a Japanese press release. Uh, we've got all the details for you about that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss YouTube channel. Uh, Video and channel, video on the channel. <laughs> uh, share the channel around with your friends, family, and on social media. Make sure you get your questions in for the 1,500 subscriber QA when we hit that number. Uh, use the hashtag question before or after you put your question in the comment section below. And for now, guys, let's get into this video. So, this is on FutureQ Highland. Uh, now, look on social media or online uh, on the internet if you want to find uh, this press release. You know, type in about Future Q Highland 2022 uh, and you should get some information. Uh, that, the information that I'm going to share you with you in this video. Uh, there are other videos from other YouTubers that have put it about them, so if you want specifics on the site, um, then please go and check out those sites, so those videos as well. But this is a PR press release site uh, in Japanese, we translated to English, but the main details that we've picked up are on this video. So let's get on then about the main discussions points from the press release by Fuji Q Highland. Uh, so Fuji Q uh, Co, Co Limited. Uh, has announced that it will introduce a new large coaster in the summer of 2022. So this is for Future Goo Highland, that's the sort of company. Uh, overview of the new coaster, we don't know the name yet. The estimated amount is 3.6 billion yen approximately, which translates to about $33 million, which is a big price tag. Now put that into perspective, um, the 1996 coaster, um, Obviously, if you don't know your history on the park, obviously, first of all, by the way, Fujiku Han is a fantastic park. Um, but yeah, to put it into perspective, uh, the 1996 coaster Fujiyama, which is a Togo sit down coaster, that cost 3 yen, about. Uh, and that was the same price tag for the 2001 Dodonpa. Now, of course, it's Dodonpa, because they've taken out the airtime hill and replaced it with the vertical loop. Uh, Ijanika. That opened in 2006, that's the um, fourth dimensional coaster uh, by Arrow, and that cost around 3.6 billion yen. So, this is going to be uh, the same price, we'll look at the same price tag as Ijanika. Um, Takabisha that opened in 2011, that's 3 billion yen. Um, and Doda Dompa uh, was the re renewal announce of approximately 1.5 billion yen when they did the refurbishment. Uh, and this is scheduled to open, and of course the name of details will be announced separately as soon as they are determined. So, now there's a few uh, specific informations to pick out from this park, and a specific development. Uh, first of all, it's landlocked. The park is completely landlocked, so if they were going to add a brand new roller coaster for that major price tag, they'd be looking for something with a quite a, comp like quite a compact footprint. Uh, what we're looking at here. Um, so it's there's limited options. There's limited options, especially with the coast account they've got now. I know a lot of people have said BM dive, but I think with a couple of coasts already having that beyond vertical drop uh, or a straight vertical drop like the Ijanika uh, fourth dimension coaster, um, you know, I don't think that a dive coaster would be the best option, especially with the ones out in chi China and Japan already. Um, now, of course, another big option that's going around as rumours is an Intamin multi launch, like a Taran at Fantasialand or something like that. I w if they were going to go for something with that price tag, then you we could see something like what Bush Gardens Williamsburg are doing for 2021, like an Intamin Giga launch coaster, like a shuttle Giga launch coaster from that style. That would be quite cool, but again, I think that's a very outstretched layout, what they're doing at Busch Gardens Williamsburg for 2021, so again, it wouldn't really make much sense. An intimate multi launch like Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, that's opening this year in 2020, that will be a nice addition. Um, I think that the B&M Giga option that loads of people are talking about, loads of people saying B&M Giga, B&M Giga, B&M Giga, I don't know if they've got the right space for it. Now, in terms of space, I'm going to go on about that in a little bit. 
But there is one main side that I can pick out from this and sort of where this could go. Now, of course, you've got um, the possibility of a B&M wing coaster. Obviously, they've got the fourth dimension coaster. So a wing coaster might not make much sense, but it's not ruled out. It's not ruled out because the fourth dimension coaster, Ijanika, you've got like spinning seats. So a traditional wing coaster or a flying wing coaster, as some of the roller coaster database models sort of present themselves as, you've got a wing coaster, you've got a flying wing coaster. Like the, I think it's called like the Parrot Coaster or the uh, Golden Parrot Coaster or something like that, which is a flying wing coaster. Um, a B&M Flyer, there's a couple out in Japan, so probably not the best option because they want to compete. Uh, so I think that a B&M Flying Coaster with two already fantastic looking flying coasters out there by B&M, I think that would be quite a drab option uh, for that price tag. Now, of course, a B&M Hyper, that could be a potential option instead of a Giga, but a Hyper, again, would it answer to that $33 million price tag? Again, approximately 3.6 billion yen, not too sure. Uh, Mac and Premier Rides, if I'm not mistaken, haven't worked on a coaster in Japan yet, so maybe the first Mac coaster, like a Mac launch, like a, an icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach or a Blue Fire at Europa Park, that would be fantastic. Maybe something like DC Rivals Hyper Coaster over in Australia at the Warner Brothers Movie World. That'll be a fantastic addition. Premier Rise, they've done some good stuff recently. Maybe Asia's first quadruple launch, uh, quadruple launch racing coaster, like a West Coast Racers, but actually opens on time. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, sorry, Six Flags. Uh, <laughs> um, so there's plenty of options still available, but it's just... I think it's just a waiting game, really, as to when the first plans are going to come out. Now, I talked about space. Now, I said this park is landlocked, so if they're going to need to put this coaster in, they're going to need to find the space. Now, like I said, there's one main site, one, that I can sort of pick out. The Mad Mouse, that's their Wild Mouse coaster. That's been closed. That's still standing from right here. You've got a spinning pendulum next to it and what looks like either an uh, employee car park or an overflow car park. I'm not too sure exactly what kind of car park it is, but right next to the pendulum. If you remove that car park somewhere else, relocate the pendulum or remove it and put in a better pendulum in the future, a better pendulum rather, like an Intamin Gyro Swing or a Giga Discovery or a Giant Discovery by Zamperla, like a better pendulum Frisbee ride, uh, so if you remove or relocate the pendulum and the car park, uh, and relocate the car park somewhere else, and obviously remove the Mad Mouse coaster, you've got a lot of space to work with. You know, it's still quite compact, which is perfect for Fujiku's Highlands landlocked site, but you can possibly have a good, decent-sized $33 million coaster, uh, 3.6 billion yen approximate coaster, in that site. Now, of course, there is the potential if Future Guha wanted to, to expand the land, but again, it's landlocked at the minute, so I really wouldn't see them expanding their land. So, I think the best case scenario, I think, would be an Intamin multi-launch or a Mac multi-launch, uh, because I think that's the ride that they're sort of missing the most, in my opinion. Obviously, you could go with a Giga or a Dive or a Flyer or a wing coaster, but in my personal opinion, I think either a Mac launch, multi-launch, or an Intamin multi-launch, because I think the multi-launch is what the part needs, in my opinion. Yes, they've got Dodompa, Dododompa. I keep I keep thinking it's Dodompa, but it's not now, it's Dododompa. Um, now they've got that coaster. <laughs> I've, I've, I've just completely given up on pronunciations. Um, now that they've got Dododompa, I think that uh, a more multi-launch coaster that's based on not really acceleration like Dodo Dome is, uh, but a launch coaster that focuses a multi-launch coaster that focuses on rapid transitions, um, quick turns, uh, high, a couple of high elements, but very low to the ground. Um, and I think that site with the Mad Mouse, the Pendulum, and the old car park, uh, what looks to be an overflow car park, I think that is a perfect site for a rapid transition, low to the ground, Intamin or Mac multi launch roller coaster. I think that's a perfect site. Uh, so that's just my personal thoughts on Future Goo Highland 2022. It's one of the big projects for 2022 now. You know, we're getting closer and closer every year. <laughs>
you know, we're only a couple of months into 2020 and already we've got 2022 stuff, which means this is going to be a massive project. Uh, so this is going to be a project we're going to follow extremely closely over the next couple of years here on Coast Chow. For now though guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell see that new YouTube video. If there's any Japanese viewers out there that can possibly give me construction updates, my Instagram link is in the description down below this video. Please message it if you're down there regularly and give me some construction updates on this because I would love to follow this, this coaster very closely and then in the future, if I ever decide to go out to Asia, then this would be a bucket list coaster for me. Thank you very much. My name is Coach Chalky on the Coast Life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.